Thank you so much for watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. We are thrilled, elated, and ecstatic to have you watching today. And I want to encourage you. I was reading the other day in Luke chapter 1, and I was reading about some interaction between Elizabeth and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And I love what Elizabeth says to Mary in chapter 1, verse 45. Blessed is she who believes that there would be a fulfillment of what God had spoken to her by the Lord. And I want to encourage you today that God has probably spoken to you some promises, some things in your heart, and I want to encourage you to stay faithful in trusting and believing God for those, the fulfillment of those promises. And mom, sometimes it can get discouraging when we don't see the results of right. the promise. You're right. like, oh. Or it takes a long time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, it says in Luke 1, 45, blessed is she who believes that there will be a fulfillment. So I encourage you today, there's tremendous blessing in keeping your faith and staying strong in your belief in God. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you that God would help you to stay strong in your faith. Sarah, I love this, dreams and visions. Because folks, dreams and vision are supernatural. And so when God drops these things into our heart, we have to hold on to that supernatural. So you're gonna see in your life where there are dreams and visions you've had that maybe they haven't come to pass yet. Or maybe you've had very discouraging people who said, oh, that will never happen. But don't let people steal your dream. Don't let people steal your vision. Hold on, because this keeps you supernatural. I certainly want you to have this. And so be sure you call in and get it and we're gonna join the teaching. Listen to the teaching, get hold of the word in your heart. And folks, I wanna be, and so does Sarah, your crazy faith friend. We want to believe for your dreams and visions, but if you don't call us, how can we have crazy faith with you? So call us right now and keep your heart open. And some of you, I feel this in this service tonight, you may be thinking, mm, I used to have a vision that I got discouraged, you know, kind of beat on myself, I failed, I did some stupid things. But folks, you can come back and seize the vision. So I just say that because if we will believe in the impossible, God will do the supernatural. Now, look around you. You're probably in a desert, but it's not you who are gonna achieve it. If you will believe, he will achieve. Now that's a good one, so I think you need to stand up. <laughs> stand up. You say, I've worked all day, I know. This is so good for you, I'm so proud of you that you're here. Now put your hand on your heart. Say, if I believe, if I believe I'll do the believing. Do He'll, do the He'll do the achieving. He can stop the sun. He can stop the moon. And I need to speak Speak to the circumstance. Speak to the mountain. And it will move. Amen. Amen. So Joshua, wow. He took it all. This is so wonderful in just a short time. Now, I want to talk about crazy faith. Audacious faith. Faith that seizes the vision and holds on to it. Just doesn't let go. I looked at Joshua, and I thought, was he ever afraid? Because you say, well, I have so much fear, I can't do it. I think everybody who seizes a vision and starts to walk in crazy faith is scared out of their shoes. I like what Joyce Meyer says, do it scared. So if you think, well, you know, I'm not in crazy faith, I've got fears. Crazy faith doesn't say that you won't have any fears. It just says you're putting your faith in God and not yourself. Correct? Okay. What, what about your mistakes? Mm. Did Joshua make any mistakes? When you read this book, you will see he did. He went to fight at Ai after he'd had such a supernatural encounter at Jericho. Then he goes out to Ai and is kind of overconfident, and yeah, he's supposed to take the land, but he didn't wait to get the instructions. And so he's just kind of there, you know, uh, we can do it, and kind of full of pride, I think. And they went out, and I'm telling you, they got beaten, and some of their men got killed. Whew. 
He went back. He said, oh, God. You know, I failed it. I'm so sorry. Show me what to do. Did God say, man, if you're going to make mistakes like this so early in the trip, forget it. No. What does God use? He uses fearful people. Did you know that? What does God use? I say he uses stupid people. He uses me. And sometimes I've done some very stupid things. What does God use? People who make mistakes. But don't sit down on their mistakes and dig a hole and crawl into it and lose the vision. Then they lose the supernatural. I was reading about a young man who really, he got born again when he was 19, was going to a university, and he really wanted to win his wing. And they had put him on this wing with all of these big athletes, and he was small and not a good athlete. And he and his roommate were Christians, so they really tried to witness to these athletes. And these athletes said, get lost, man. You know, no way. And just, mm, they were without favor. They just turned them off. So he said one night, God, I know your vision is to win this wing, but I don't know how to do it. I'm just turning them off. I'm not even turning them on. And God said to him, he gave him away, just like AI. He said, uh, feed them and they will come to you. So he took his money, his spending money, he had $100, and he bought all this food that he knew they liked. Then he went and knocked on all the doors and said, if you get hungry, come to my room, I've got a snack for you. And so he did this for two or three months, and one night at midnight, somebody knocks at the door, and he said to the roommate, surely nobody wants a cupcake at this hour, surely. So he goes to the door, Here's the number one football hero. He's crying and crying. He said, I just need Jesus. And he comes in and just melts all over the place. So they're trying to lead him to the Lord. No, no. He said, it has to be done in the church. I have to go to church. I have to go forward. They said, okay, we'll take you to church Sunday. And so he did. He went forward. He received Jesus, became a wild evangelist, and the whole wing was saved. See, folks, that young man had a vision. That's the vision. And you get hold of that vision. It just makes you hold on when everything looks so bad and also that you make mistakes, that you're fearful. If you read the beginning of Joshua, he keeps saying to him, be strong and courageous. Over and over, Moses says it to him. The people say, be strong and courageous, which says to me he probably was shaking, but he had the vision. He had the vision. And sometimes a vision takes time. You're believing for a child to come through for God. You're believing for your marriage. You know, it takes time. But if we can get hold of that vision and hold on, God will give us the revelation of how to see it come to pass. So I'm going to tell a very personal thing. Uh, I don't know how long we had been married, maybe 10 or 11 years. And... uh, One day, Wally said to me, we were driving someplace. He said, you know, Marilyn, you're so capable and you like to work hard. You really don't need anybody. And the Lord said to me, that's a signal for you. You better watch it. So the Lord showed me, you need to tell him you need him, which I really did. And if you've been in this church very long, nobody promoted me like Wally. But I had to start saying, Oh, you look so nice in that tie. Oh, I love what you preach. Oh, I love the way you worship. Oh, I need you. I just can't do that. Well, I couldn't lead worship while I die on the spot. That was a revelation for my marriage. And God had a vision. We had a vision to have a strong marriage, and we did, though we were very different. But we did. And if Wally had lived beyond October 19th on December 26th, we would have been married 59 years. You say, wow, well, you know, you were just real nice and easy to live with. No, I wasn't. I'm glad he's in heaven, you can't ask him. He wasn't easy to live with. But folks, we had the vision. And the vision keeps you supernatural in your marriage. The vision will keep you supernatural in your finances. The vision will keep you supernatural in your health. The Bible says, as your days are, so shall your strength be. People say to me, where do you get your strength? Oh, I get it every day. As my day is, so shall my strength be. That's what he says. The vision he has for me is health. 
What's the vision he has for you? Health. And you may have a vision for, you know, someone you've offended or some kind of trash. Folks, get a vision of reconciliation and hold on to it and let the Holy Spirit show you what to do in seeing that come to pass. What did God make us to be? Supernatural. Everybody say supernatural. Your vision, and I put this in your notes, I think it's so important. Your vision should never be linked to who you think you are or what you think you can do. Wait a minute. You say, well, I'm not talented in this, and I'm not sharp with finances, and I'm not this, I'm not that. But wait. With God, all things are possible. With you, nothing is very possible. But with God, all things are possible. Even speaking to the Son. And then I couldn't help but think of David. David failed big time. And he had a vision. He had a vision to build God a house. He wanted to build a temple. But he got involved with Bathsheba. He had Uriah killed. Bad news. All exposed. So what did he do? Did he let go of the vision because he looked at his failures? I'm such a mess, God could never use me. No, he goes to God in Psalm 51. And David doesn't look at his, his failures. He looks at God's forgiveness. Do you feel like there is a deeper meaning to your dreams? Have you ever awakened from a dream with a deep, burning conviction that your dream will come to pass? Sometimes it can be hard to understand the true meaning of your dreams, and you may wonder if your dream came from God. Today is the day to discover the spiritual meaning of your dreams. In this special offer, Marilyn will show you how to recognize God's Word in your dreams and hold on to them. For your gift of $20, we will send you Maryland's Dreams and Visions CD set. Hold on to your Dreams booklet and Spiritual Life Confession card to help you hold true to your dreams and see His Word in them. Your dreams are not meaningless, so don't be afraid to dream beyond the impossible. The Bible is filled with stories of God speaking through dreams, and your dreams may be no different. See His hand in your dream and find the spiritual conviction that you have been looking for. Call or click today to receive this special offer. Phnom Penh, Cambodia has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Night care, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Night care from Saving Moses. Where are we looking tonight? Are we looking at our failures? Or are we looking at his forgiveness for our failures? And now watch what happened. God spoke to David one day and said, David, I know you want to build me a house, but you're a man of war. You can get the plan. You can get all of everything ready. And your son will build the house. But now listen to this. But he said, David, I'm going to build you a house that will never end. Okay, David built, uh, Solomon built the temple. I can tell you how long it lasted. It lasted almost 500 years. It's no longer there. The Babylonians threw it down. But is the house of David still going on? Because you see, God's vision lasts. Everybody say, God's vision for me is supernatural. Now, I'm going to give you some real practical things because I know what you're thinking. Well, tell me how it works. Okay. So I give you principles for crazy faith in number four. So watch this. Call in for prayer if you're having a problem with vision. Call in for prayer for faith. Okay. What are the principles of crazy faith? 
And they're just so simple. Hearing the word. Faith can't work without being in the word. If you want to have faith and never read your Bible, forget it. The word brings faith, correct? So we hear what the word says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm surrounded with favor like a shield. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm accepted in the beloved. Okay, then the second thing, you say it. You say, you know what my vision is? My vision is to build the biggest, what, uh, sports business in the United States. That's my vision. And you say, well, what do you have now? Well, I just have a little store with two employees. But my vision is to build the biggest. So you began to say it. And you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. People say to you, well, you're not that kind of material. You can never handle people that well. And so you just say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am accepted in the beloved. I'm surrounded with righteousness like a shield. Well, you don't have the knowledge to do it, but I'm going to learn. And Jesus has made into me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. What are you saying? You hear the word, but are you saying the word for yourself? You must say it, and then you have to do it. There is some act of faith. If Joshua had stopped with pursuing those people all night, man, and the sun going down, it would not have happened. Now, there's something that is very key here for you tonight, and this is probably the biggest spiritual truth in all of this. So listen to me closely, because the Holy Spirit really wants to speak to us tonight. Do you know when they circumcised all those fighting men, they were getting ready to take the promised land. Why? They're circumcised. They're God's property. They're covenant people. And every one of you who are born again, everyone who's born again, raise your hand. You have a circumcised heart. And so what does that say? You have Jesus in your heart. And as he is, so are you. I have a circumcised heart. You have a circumcised heart. He can talk to you. He can walk with you. He can do the impossible because he gives you the vision and you hold on to the vision. So there is an activity to faith. You can talk all day, and I've told this story many times. My husband had an uncle who sat on the front porch of his house, and he would rock back and forth and say, I wish I had a million dollars. I wish I had a million dollars. Well, he died without a million dollars. Sitting in a rocking chair doesn't make the vision come to pass. You hear the word, you speak the word, and you do the word. There has to be an activity in faith. So you say, well, I don't know what to do. Well, ask him. You have a circumcised heart. He says that he's your good shepherd, that you know the voice of the shepherd. And isn't it doesn't always come right away. You know, just like God spoke to me in that dream. I thought that was so unusual. And then I don't have spiritual dreams. I have crazy dreams. I wake up and think, devil, I rebuke you. Just stupid dreams. But I've been having spiritual dreams lately, and I had another dream about China. And we now have 95 signed up to go to China. So if you're going with us, you better sign up fast. And I had a dream that I was in China, but I was working with a group of businessmen. And I was sharing Jesus, and I had favor that I couldn't believe. So I'm taking this, that we have a lot of opportunity to minister there, but that I'm going to get to minister to some businessmen, and they are going to receive Jesus. Why? The vision. And then God begins to give you the process of it. Now, let me talk to you, because we're going to pray about your vision. And next Wednesday night... I'm going to talk about God's personal vision for you. So if you don't come, I feel sorry for you. And if you had missed any night, you should have missed tonight. Because next Wednesday night will be the best. So look at someone and say, honey, 
I know you need to come. Okay. Now let's look at this. Down at the very bottom, I have this underlined. And I would put the promise in front of process, but I would say you get the promise and you go through the process. What's the process? That's when we want to jump out of the boat because it's getting hard. That's when we think, Ugh, I've run all night long after the enemy and now the sun's going down. Stay in the process. Because frankly, folks, you don't just start out with just glorious faith. You start out in a process. Amen? And as you go in that process, the Bible says we go from faith to faith, strength to strength, and glory to glory. What are you in tonight? Undoubtedly, you're in the process because I think most of you are claiming promises. But what's the last one? The payoff! It comes. Everybody say, it comes. It comes. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to write down three things that you know God wants to happen. You know he wants to bring a financial blessing. So put financial blessing. Write down if you want a mate to be saved or your marriage to be strong or you want a mate. Write it down. You sure want a godly mate, and he's got the best for you. Write down if, you know, your family is all fragmented, and you want, or you have people in your life that are not happy with you. Write down reconciliation. Keep a vision of reconciliation. God will show you how. So you have three things, and I may not have mentioned your three or one, only one of them, but write them down. These are important. Write them down. When you get connected to the vision, it's like you're connected to electricity, the electricity of God. When you get connected, you just think, this thing is not over until this vision comes to pass. It is just not over. All right, now you're just looking at me. Are you finished? Okay, stand up. Again. Stand up. Is God going to do this? You do the believing, he does the achieving. Right? Okay, hold it up. Say, Father, Father. I'm, speaking to the sun. I'm speaking to the sun. The sun is not going down in my life. I'm saying, sun, sun. stand still. Stand. Moon, Moon, stay in the valley of Agilon. I'm saying, I have this vision, and you are bringing it to pass. And in the process, you are giving me words of knowledge revelation in unusual ways. I'm in the process, but I see something. The payoff is coming because I see him who is invisible. Do you feel like there is a deeper meaning to your dreams? Have you ever awakened from a dream with a deep, burning conviction that your dream will come to pass? Sometimes it can be hard to understand the true meaning of your dreams, and you may wonder if your dream came from God. Today is the day to discover the spiritual meaning of your dreams. In this special offer, Marilyn will show you how to recognize God's Word in your dreams and hold on to them. For your gift of $20, we will send you Marilyn's Dreams and Visions CD set. Hold on to your dreams booklet and spiritual life confession card to help you hold true to your dreams and see His Word in them. Your dreams are not meaningless, so don't be afraid to dream beyond the impossible. The Bible is filled with stories of God speaking through dreams, and your dreams may be no different. See His hand in your dream 
and find the spiritual conviction that you have been looking for. Call or click today to receive this special offer. We are so excited to invite you to join with us an amazing, powerful group trip to Argentina and Uruguay. While we're there, we get to see all kinds of amazing things. We get to visit Colonia in Uruguay, plus we get to tour the burial site of Vida Perón and tour around Buenos Aires and see amazing sights there. And Mom, the best part of the whole trip is that we get to minister. Yes, we do. And we get to minister in a hot situation because revival began there 60 years ago and the whole nation is being shaken. So we will be involved in healing meetings, in youth meetings, in street evangelism, and Uruguay, we believe we're gonna have a big healing meeting there. Also, hmm, how wonderful. And we will be in this beautiful city founded in 1680. Call, bring people with you. Let the Holy Spirit shake you and use you. Did you know that one prayer can change your life forever? You say, one prayer. Yes, one prayer. When I was 16 years old, I prayed one prayer that is still changing my life. I'm in my 70s, and not only is it changing my life daily and has for all these years, but I have eternal life because of that one prayer. Oh, that prayer transforms everything. You say, well, what is the prayer? And I'll tell you what it is. I invited Jesus to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I repented of my sins and he came into my heart and he's never left me. And he will never leave you either because the Bible says, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will give you eternal life. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Maybe you've never prayed it. Maybe you've prayed it, but your life is out of sync. Hey, you can pray and recommit your life to him. Pray with me right now. Mean this with your heart. Say, Father, I believe you love me. You have a wonderful plan for my life. I am sorry for my sins and the wrong things I have done. Please forgive me. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ. I have faith in his blood. Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Your life is changing, and transformed. You will never be the same. Did you recommit your life? Expect transformation. And above all, know that your name is written in heaven and not in hell. Hey. 